What's up everyone, my name is of course Tom and welcome to TechStream. Today we're doing a bit of an unusual video and we are basically going to be going through the processes involved in cleaning and maintaining and sort of your initial setup of course of custom water cooling loops. First of all as always though, let's roll on that intro. So there's a bit of an interesting story behind today's video. Um, it's a little bit unplanned in that it's happened because of a mistake of my own. Now, I've been doing custom water cooling loops for, ooh, I think I did my first one when I was about 14, which would have been back in 2004. So yeah, quite a while. And I've always used the same method when it comes to cleaning my loops out. I've gone down the cheap and old fashioned method of flushing it with um, a vinegar water solution, followed by a bicarbonate of soda solution to neutralize it. Never had any problems, really. Um, flushed my system out ooh, a couple of weeks ago and filled it up with some nice pastel coolant and it just completely and utterly separated. Um, got chatting with the guys over at Mayhem's and they went, how about we ping you over one of our blitz kits and uh, do it properly or yeah, do it properly really. The vinegar method, although it does work, and like I say, it's never been a problem for me, basically what happened was I didn't actually flush the vinegar out properly, which then meant that the system was acidic, and the moment I put my pastel in, it just all went to pop. The blitz kit here, this is the proper way of doing it, so we're gonna be going through it, and first of all, let's have a look at what is in the blitz kit. So, these kits aren't that expensive, to be honest with you. We've got our little instruction booklet. It's got some uh, what's called litmus paper in there, in it. And what that does is that gives you pH levels. We have got part one. We've got a little measuring beaker. We've got part two. We've got some nitrile rubber gloves and some safety goggles. Now, one thing that the guys at Mayhem's do say is do not read the instructions on the website. Now, this would normally not be something I would agree with, but the reasoning for that is the instructions in your kit are the instructions for your kit, which does mean that should you have maybe an older kit or a newer kit than what is shown on the website, the instruction manual in your pack will be right. Now, as you can see, this is a two-part kit, part one and part two. Part one is only to be used in radiators. Do not put this through your entire system. Um, what will happen, if you can quite see on the video, um, these nickel-plated barbs, for example, all the nickel plating has come off of them. That is from quite a few years of uh, vinegar flushes, which effectively does the same thing, just it's not as strong. So yeah, do not use this on anything but Copper radiators, copper and brass radiators, do not use it on aluminium radiators or anything like that. So we are going to follow the instructions. We're going to start off with flushing this radiator out. So I've actually already pulled it from my test rig, which is sitting over there. We will do some more work with that later. So we'll just set our radiator aside for now. Now I must say, you would normally pull your barbs out and use a funnel. I'm going to cheat because I'm lazy and I'm going to pour in with a jug. Don't follow me. Barbs, remove your barbs or your compression fittings or anything like that. It's a bit easier with barbs because you get a nice big hole. But remove your fittings, use a funnel. And as it says in here, do not use on aluminium tube radiators for use on internal copper brass tube radiators only. Do not use on plated products. Do not use in a water cooling loop. Do not spill on paintwork if you do rinse it off immediately. It will strip paint. This is, as you can see, a very tatty but monstrously thick radiator. Hence, I still use it because it's actually an incredibly effective radiator. So, part one. Part one is mix part one with the ionized water. I actually keep five gallons of it in the shed. So, I've just distilled, uh, distilled, uh, decanted some. And mix at a ratio of 50 parts of part one to 950 mil of water. I happen to know I do not need a full litre, so we're actually gonna mix up a, 400, uh, a 500 mil batch by doing 25 mil of part one, and we're gonna mix that with 475 mils of water. So we're gonna put 25 in and add to 500. So, 
safety first as always. Let's get on. Wacky goggles on. Now I will say this is going to be a, a lot more lengthy than usual video. Most of my videos are only about 15 minutes long. Today will be a bit longer. Feel free to skip through to bits that you are relevant to. Um, now, everybody, most people would think that, oh, I have a brand new radiator, I do not need to flush it. Wrong. Uh, old, old radiators will be full of gunk. New radiators will be full of manufacturing sort of leftovers. Flux and just dirt and debris from them being manufactured, they are not clean. Even the most expensive and best quality radiators on the market have gunk in them. Um, like I said, when they solder these things or they braze them together, there's flux in them. Flux needs to be removed, otherwise it will show up and stain all your system and things like that. So, let's get our PPE on. Pair of rubber gloves, there's actually a couple of pairs included here. Now, normally I wouldn't be doing this sort of in my studio. This is the sort of thing that I would wait until the wife is out and do in the kitchen. I would recommend you do it in somewhere where you have access to a tap and things as well. It just means that should you have any accidents, you have access to free flowing water to rinse either you or your item off. So let's get our rubber gloves on. Wow. And we're going to start with our part one. Got to stick a hole in the top. Now this is incredibly strong stuff. So, goggles on. Now, like I said, we're going to mix up 500 mil, which will be more than enough to fill this radiator. Uh, you could mix up, as per the instructions, the full litre. But basically, they've given you the instructions for a full litre. That's to cover the biggest of radiators. I know 500 mil will be enough. So we're going to do 25 mil of part one. Put our cap on. And we're going to put this straight back in its box, because we are not going to need any more of that. So we will put that into... Our jug. You, I would always recommend make sure these are fully rinsed out properly, just in case little fingers pick them up. But always make sure that things like this, right, are not left anywhere where kids or uneducated people that don't know what this is could pick them up, because that stuff that will peel your skin off. And we are then going to top this up to 500 milliliters of total product, which will be enough to flush this radiator. So there we have our 500ml of very, very strong acid. Like I said, this is purely for flushing radiators out. It will strip, it's, it's not far off of paint stripper kind of stuff. I will put just a cloth down so that I don't rip t tear anything off the tabletop, just in case. Now, I did say, put remove your barbs and put your funnels in, but I'm going to be lazy. What you would do if you're using, doing a normal radio, take your barbs off, g quarter blanking plugs. Okay, these are, This is what you would be using, just so you can blank it off. So we will then pour in slowly our liquid. And we will now skip until uh, we have a very full radiator. So, there we go. This is our radiator completely full of liquid. What I did do, we're dribbling. What I did do was I uh, capped this off and then I tilted it just to make sure there was no air bubbles or anything in it. And what you want to do now, with this capped off, is stick it away for about six hours and just leave it to do its job. Like I said, this is very strong stuff. Just leave it, don't have to do anything with it. A bit of shaking, you could do, give it a bit of agitation, but you shouldn't have any air bubbles in this. You shouldn't have much agitation to do. And like I said, we're gonna come back to this in six hours time, and then we're gonna empty it out. So it has been six hours later. This has been left to stew, shall we say. And what we're gonna do now, tip this out, and we are pretty much ready for them putting this back into our system. But you do need to flush this out properly. I would recommend with lots and lots of water just to make sure that it is pretty clean of everything that you're gonna have any problems with. So I just got a bucket over here. We'll get grab our bucket. And 
and we're going to see lots and lots of nasty, ooh yeah, in my case blue gunk, come pouring out of this radiator. Now what I would now recommend, stick some hose on your barbs, get to yourself to some mains water tap and flush this through. What I've put into this bucket, put it down the drain, any leftover product from when you first mixed it up, again, perfectly safe to go down the drain, completely clean your drains out as well. Right, so I've been away and I have completely flushed this radiator out. Just uh, what I did to start off with, I literally put a couple of hoses on it, stuck it to the kitchen tap, and just kept flushing. Kept flushing, kept flushing. Switch them over, flush it, back flush it, shake it about, make sure there's nothing coming out, yeah? And then once you think you're finished, do it again, just to be double sure. And then what I did, I gave it a final rinse out with the deionized water. And then I used one of my little litmus paper strips and just test, test the pH of the water that is coming out of the radiator. If it is Basically, it's got to be green. If it's a color other than green, keep flushing. It is still acid in the system. If there is acid in the system, you'll end up doing everything I am currently doing. And I must admit, I have never had so much hassle. Because of my mistake, I have a very, very gummed up and disgusting looking system, all down to basically me taking a shortcut. So guys, don't take shortcuts. pH, pH strips are there for a reason you will lose and ruin your coolant by not doing it. So, you do your PA strip test. Then what we do, our next job is to move on to part two. Part two is now cleaning the whole system. Because copper and brass are very tough materials, you can go strong, you can use your part one. Now, a lot of the rest of the components in your water cooling system are nickel plated, they look very pretty, yeah, but they won't withstand the strong chemicals that are in pH in part one. So you then go on to part two. Now this is for uh, removal of slime, gungeon, sleet, uh, silt, sleet. It's been snowing here recently. Uh, silt in the system. So it removes all the gunk that's sitting there. That it sort of like coats everything, but you can't really see it. But it does make a difference. So yep, yeah, what we do now, refit our radiator back to our system, fill it up with some di uh, distilled water and part two mix. Mixing is the same process as last time. You do mix in the same way as you did for your part one. So you take your jug, you add your liquid, you then top it up with water, you use the ratio as per here, which is for part two, I'm just finding the page now, is 25 mil per liter. So you do 25 mil of this. So actually this bottle will do a good few flushes for you. Obviously, part one, you're never going to need as much of it because radiators don't really need uh, that deep of a clean that we've just done on this one very often. So, yeah, 25 mil per 900 to, to 970, so that gives you a full litre of coolant, shall we say, for your system. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go away, I'm going to fit my radiator back into my system, and then we're going to come back, we're going to mix some chemical up. I'm going to move you over so that you can see my rather disgusting looking test bench at the moment um, and we can then go through part two and how to do it. So my cleaned radiator is now fitted back to the system everything is all connected up. What I'm going to do now is we're going to mix up just a little bit of our part two. So as always safety gloves and goggles before ever opening a bottle Same again, aluminium cap, so something just to slice the top open with. Now I did say this one is no way near as nasty as part one. Still wouldn't recommend getting it on yourself. What you then want to do is take your bottle that you the same measuring that is measuring beaker that you used last time. It's obviously been cleaned out. And we're going to measure our 25 mil. This one is a slightly blue liquid, 25 millilitres into our cleaned out jug. Caps back on, guys, always remember. 
and then fill up our beaker, our beaker, our jug to the full one litre. And there we go. That is our one litre of our part two ready mixed liquid. Okay, this, what this is going to do, this is going to clean out any sort of silt, detritus and rubbish that's in the loop, as well as neutralise any leftovers. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pick you guys up, bring you over here, and we can take a closer look at my loop. So I've never really shot with you from this angle sort of guy, so I'm hoping this is going to work out okay. Um, I must admit, I'm going to cheat, I'm not going to use my safety goggles because um, I can't really see what I'm doing when trying to deal with the camera, this lot, all of you. So this is my test rig. I actually use Cool Arms quick releases on this so that I can quickly swap between air coolers, water coolers, different blocks and things like that. 240 radiator, dirty old reservoir. It's not the best or cleanest, but it is an effective system. So what we're gonna do now is just put our part two in and turn our pump on. So what I've got here is a power supply jumper and we're simply gonna use this instead of having the whole system powered up, we just want to power the pump up just so that we can circulate the fluid. So everything is disconnected, 24 pin, plug this in, flip your power supply on. So what I'm gonna do now, I've actually gotta hold this higher than my pump to get it to prime and things. So you're probably gonna see a bit of my back while we do this, but I will do my best to explain. So we took our, take our pre-mixed fluid that we made just a little bit earlier and fill our reservoir up or however you fill your system up. And we then, well, I'm actually gonna stick the cap back on my radiator. Now filling your loop up will obviously vary. So fill your loop up as much as you can. Stick your pump on however you need to. I've lost my little jumper. So for this system, it is simply a case of jumping our power supply, and you'll see this will very quickly all disappear. Like I said, this is a very well used and abused system. It is not exactly looked after. Now this product does foam up a lot. You will find your system is a lot noisier with it in. And all this is going to do is collect up all of that gunk and rubbish that is in your system and suspend it basically so that you can then pour it out. So what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do now, is actually cap this off and leave it running. Now you may find that after you've done this there's still some bits sort of stuck to blocks and things. Depending on how much there is, I would either recommend dis manual, dis manually dismantling said blocks, or if it's only minor and you think it'll come out, simply put it in again and run again. You will obviously have to mix up some more. Now once you have done this, it is the same case of flush, repeat, flush, repeat, and test with your litmus paper to make sure that your system is pH neutral. So a pH of seven or your litmus paper goes green. Once that is done and you're happy, flush it all out again. Like I said, lots and lots of flushing. This was my mistake that I made last time. I basically didn't flush it out. I was being lazy. I have a newborn baby. I was a little bit tired and grumpy. I just couldn't be bothered. It was my own mistake. It has cost me dearly. Do it properly first time around. Otherwise you end up having to do all of this. And then, Put in your choice of coolant. I have some nice Mayhem's pastel to go in this in a nice blue, in a nice texturing blue color. So there we go, guys. That is pretty much it for tonight. I've uh, been through the Blitz kit for you. I hope this has given you just a little bit of information as to how to prep and maintain, because this is effectively the same sort of thing you may find yourself doing in maybe 12 months or 18 months time. If you want to change colors or things like that, I would recommend doing what I have just done. Because as you can see, ideally I do need to strip this reservoir down, but this blue stuff, this will be sitting inside your radiators and blocks and things like that. And running sort of like Blitz 2 through the radiator will remove all of this. And Blitz 1 will eventually remove all of this. You can see this fluid is actually going a bit more blue now as we're going through. So yeah, it's a very nice and easy to use kit. It's not exactly expensive. Follow the instructions. You really can't go wrong. 
there we go. I think the Blitz could get a massive thumbs up for me. In the past, I have been cheap, shall we say, or tight or lazy, and I've just used vinegar. I think from now on, I've definitely been switched over to using Blitz for my cleaning. Um, it isn't any more difficult than using my old vinegar and bicarb method, but it has definitely appeared to be a lot more effective. The amount of gunk that poured out of that radiator. Um, so there we go. That's it from me here at TechStream today. If you've liked this video, thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Comments and questions down below. I will put a link as to where you can grab yourself a Blitz kit. And as always, if you want to see me again, click that subscribe button. I will be here again same time next week. And bye for now.